Hey everybody. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can calculate the peg ratio in Excel and how to set up a template to, to do that. So this is just a snapshot of the end result, what it's gonna look like. So we've got the ticker, stock price, EPS, annual EPS growth, price to earnings ratio, and the peg ratio. So the peg ratio can be um, a helpful metric, especially when you're comparing stocks with different PE ratios, because it can help you gauge what's a good buy versus what's not. Not good buy. The lower the peg ratio, the better of a buy it is. Here I've got some conditional formulas. So okay, this is green, this is good. Yellow, not so good. Red, not good at all, right? So it sort of normalizes that PE ratio because a lot of stocks trade at very different multiples. And so um, the peg ratio can help, help normalize that based on their future growth. So I'll go over how to calculate, how to set up this sort of template from scratch. So delete that. And let's enter some placeholders for the ticker. And so with any sort of inputs, I always like to highlight them yellow just to make it clear that this is where these are values that you should enter. Um, I'm gonna enter a field for the stock price as well. So I can just copy this formatting down here. And then EPS, same thing, I can copy a one more there for annual EPS growth. And I'll go over how we calculate these um, these things and where to get this uh, information from. And while I'm at it, I'll just do another couple rows, one for the PE ratio and the PEG ratio. And so the PE ratio is a really common one. You can find that on a lot of financial websites. The PEG ratio, you can, you can find that as well, but it may not be as, as commonly used uh, by people. So we're going to go over why you might use it and how it can help you. So I use NVIDIA, Apple, and Coca-Cola as my, as my tickers that I'm going to use in this example. And so to get the stock price in, um, in Microsoft Excel is fairly straightforward. If you've, got the, uh, if you've got Office 365 or a fairly new ver version of Excel, there is the stock history function. And how it works is, you know, we can specify the ticker. And for the start date, I'm just going to use um, February 1, 2024. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because the stock history, as it implies, it's looking at history. It's not going to give you the, the current uh, day's data. It doesn't um, always work nicely with that. So it's easier to put a historical date there just to get it. And so we've got that, that uh, we've got the date and the closing price. So I want to wrap this inside of an index function to just grab the second row and the second column. Because I've only specified one date, it's always going to be the second row and second column. So that amounts 630.27. So I've got that in there. And because it's referencing this cell B1, I can just copy this over and it'll pull the stock prices for Apple and Coca-Cola as well. So we've got the stock uh, prices easy, easy enough to set up. And I'll also show you how we can do this in um, in Google Sheets as well, similar type of setup. And it's actually even easier in Google Sheets because there we can pull in the actual stock price easily and we can even pull the PE ratio. So we don't have to um, do this, this EPS calculation. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how we can do it anyways. The PE ratio you can also pull from websites as well. So for the EPS, the annual growth and even the PE ratio, we can go to a website such as Yahoo Finance or any other financial website that you use to pull this information. So I'm gonna pull over Yahoo Finance over here. And again, you can get this data on a lot of different financial websites. So I'm on the statistics tab and we have diluted EPS, TTM, so the trailing 12 months, that's the most recent uh, EPS. So 7.59, that's gonna be the EPS that I enter for NVIDIA. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other tickers as well. So we've got Apple, again, under the statistics tab, we've got um, 6.42. And then for Coca-Cola, we've got 2.47. So now to calculate the price to earnings ratio, what we're doing is taking the price and dividing it by the earnings. Hence, P divided by E, price divided by earnings. 
So I'm just gonna round this and copy this over. So I, at first glance, we can see that NVIDIA is trading at 83 times earnings, Apple at 29, Coca-Cola at 20, 25. So if you just looked at the PE ratios, you might be tempted to think, oh, Coca-Cola might be a, a better value buy because it's trading at 25 times, almost 25 times its earnings. Whereas NVIDIA looks really overpriced because it's at a multiple of 83. But one way to help normalize this data is by factoring in the growth, the expected growth. So if I go on the analysis tab in Google Finance, there, is, there are all these estimates. We've got earnings estimates, revenue estimates, earnings history, EPS trend, EPS revisions, and growth estimates. So this is ultimately what we're gonna to need to use. So these are what analysts expect the, 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 the company to grow at over the next five years. So remember, these are estimates that they, they can change over time, and they likely will. So in Coca-Cola's case, analysts expect that for the next five years, the business is gonna grow at a rate of 6% per year for the next five years. And so what I'm gonna do now is take that number, 6.34, and enter it here. I'm not entering it as a percentage, just 6.34 as it is. I'm gonna do the same thing now for Apple stock. So again, under the analysis section, we see that its expected annual growth rate is 11%. The past five was 21%, but we're always gonna look at the future growth rate because that's what we're effectively paying for, the expected future growth. So type in 11 for Apple. And now let's go to NVIDIA. And so they're expecting to grow at 102.45%. So that's an extremely high multiple. And so this is one of the limitations of using something like an expected growth rate because what this is telling you is that according to analysts, they expect NVIDIA's revenue to, or earnings to, to double every year for the next five years, to actually more than double. The next each of the next five years. So I mean that's a pretty, uh, pretty strong estimate as far as growth goes, and that's a it's a mighty big assumption, right? So that's that's the that's the risk in relying on these estimates is that they can be really bullish, or maybe really pessimistic as well. So it, it's important to, to also you know consider what those numbers look like. So to actually calculate the peg ratio, what I'm going to do is take the price to earnings multiple and divide it by that growth factor. And this is why we don't want to put it in percentages. So here we've got 3.89 for Coca-Cola, 2.65 for Apple, and NVIDIA is at 0.81. So what this, tell, this is telling us is that, sure, the PE ratio is 83, but the company is growing at a rate of 102%. So in that case, it's less than one. So it tells us that you know, based on this number, it all comes back to this annual EPS growth. Based on that number, NVIDIA is a good stock to buy because the peg ratio is 0.81. Now, that's obviously dependent on it, how, how much you want to believe that this number is going to be accurate, or right, how, how true that number is going to be. So if you do believe it, then you think, okay, then it's a good buy. And, uh, you know, you should, you should invest in it. Now, the one thing left that I had on my previous spreadsheet was conditional formatting to to help highlight you know where there's good buys where there's not good buys so i'm going to select these cells and under conditional formatting select icon sets and so i'm going to select these green yellow and red traffic lights and right now it's it's done them in opposite order how i want them to so i'm going to actually manage the rules and then click on edit and so we can we can base them on their values. Right now it's set based on percentages. What I also wanna do is put them in reverse order. So, cause I want the red to be the highest, red being bad, the yellow being moderate, and green being good as in, okay, the, it's a good stock to buy. So instead of percentage, I'm gonna put numbers here. So I'm gonna say, okay, if it's greater than or equal to three, then it's gonna be red. And then if it's, if it's, uh, less than one, which in this case, then it's gonna be green. And anything in, anything in between is gonna be yellow. So if I hit okay, apply, and now we flipped it around, we've got 0.81 peg ratio indicating green, 2.65 falling in between one and a three, so that's yellow, and then over three, that is a red traffic light. So as you can see, we can, we can update this 
to um, to use different ticker symbols, but you will have to, unless you've got a source to pull this information from, you'll probably still need to pull the annual EPS growth from a place like Yahoo Finance. Um, unless again, if you got another site to pull that source from, but that's how you can calculate it in Excel um, is by doing it that way. So now I'm gonna to try to recreate this using Google Sheets. So I'm gonna follow the, a similar type of setup where we've got tickers at the top for NVIDIA, Apple, Coca-Cola. And for the stock price, I'm gonna use the Google Finance function. So in this case, I can just specify the ticker and I can enter an attribute, which in this case is gonna be price. So if I just do this, it's gonna give me the most recent price for the stock. So as you can see, 720.98, that's a lot different than 630. So this was based on February 1st. This is as I'm doing this video right now. So obviously these, this price has moved significantly since then. So I can copy this over and it'll do the same thing for Apple and Coca-Cola. Their share prices have not moved nearly as much. And now I, I can skip over the, the EPS calculation because I can pull in the PE ratio from Google Finance. So I'm gonna skip that and just type in the annual EPS growth. There isn't a function to pull in the PEG ratio um, from, uh, from Google Sheets, so I'm gonna manually enter this one. So 102.45, 11, 6.34 for these, for these stocks. Now for the PE ratio. So I'm again gonna use the Google Finance function, select the ticker and for the attribute, I'm gonna type in PE ratio. Or actually just PE, I believe it is. Yeah, PE, 95.25. So this um, is gonna be based on, it's already doing that calculation for us. Again, the price has changed a little bit, so that's why this one's showing at 83. This is at 95, the price has gone up, so the price is higher, give it the same level of earnings. Copy this across here. And so we've got 28, so again, Similar numbers, 23.79. So it's just more up-to-date pricing. So with Google Sheets, we're able to skip that process of doing that calcula calculation and getting the EPS data. And then we can do the PEG ratio the same way, where we take the price to earnings, divide it by the annual EPS. So right now, NVIDIA is looking a little bit more expensive, 0 0.929. But essentially the same sort of story. It's still less than one. Copy this across, we've got 2.61, 3.75. So as you can see, a bit simpler in setting out up in Google Sheets just because we can take advantage of a more up-to-date stock price. And we can also pull in the PE ratio using the PE attribute. And then the stock price is just the price attribute. So, so Google Finance or Google Sheets rather makes that process a little bit easier, but you're still, unless you've got a source to pull the EPS growth from, you're still probably gonna need to um, pull that in from, from a separate website and, and download it in here. But that's how you can set up a template to, to track and calculate the, the peg ratios for different stocks. You are gonna need a few inputs to help you along, regardless of whether you're using Google Sheets or Excel, just because that annual EPS growth number that you need to do. But, um, you know, this can help you evaluate and compare stocks. You know, by looking at it now, we can see that, okay, Coca-Cola does not look that cheap anymore just because, okay, it's trading at 20, almost 25 times earnings, but it's only growing at a rate of 6%. By that stretch, Apple looks a bit better because it's multiple of 29 is, is higher, but its growth rate is also expected to be better at, at 11. So uh, it's something uh, to bear in mind, and it can be helpful when you're comparing different stocks and different earnings multiples to understand why one is trading at a far higher valuation at a far far higher price than another because like in nvidia's case we see that okay it's trading at you know 80 90 times earnings whatever that whatever it happens to be today and that's because of that expected annual growth because people are willing to pay a premium because they're expecting it to grow at such a high rate over the next five years and so a lot depends on whether it's actually going to hit that kind of growth and whether you expect it to then in that case then it might be it might be a good deal but if you think no it's not gonna not likely to achieve that then you might might not be convinced that it is but by by putting these numbers in a template it helps to, to helps to see all those assumptions and what you're comparing and what their different growth rates look like 
and are expected to be. So as you can see, not a, not a terribly complex process in setting up this template, whether it's in Google Sheets or in Excel. It's just a matter of pulling the stock price, EPS, annual growth, and then we've just got a couple calculations for the PE ratio and the PEG. And in Google Sheets, it can do the PE calculation for you right away and just pull it from Google Finance. So that's a wrap for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.